for most of the people that would listen to this podcast, they're going to be people with normal, good energy level. They're going to be optimistic and excited about life. And you've got to be careful and cautious of the energy level that you come to town with, come to the podcast with. Most hosts never achieve the results they hoped for. They're falling short on listenership and monetization, meaning their message isn't being heard and their show ends up costing them money. This podcast was created to help you grow your listenership and make money while you're at it. Get ready to take notes. Here's your host, Adam Adams. What's up, podcaster? It is your host, Adam A. Adams. And today we've got something good that we want to share with you that is going to help you. And it is about your energy level. I've got a brand new podcast client. They've been a client for more than two months and their podcast is about to launch. When you launch a podcast with us, by the way, it takes time. And I need to share that with you now. And then I'll get into the energy level that I was going to talk about with this one podcasting client in mind. And here's the thing is the energy level that you come to your podcast with. I don't know if you remember recent episode called the thermostat and the thermometer, where you can either read the temperature or you can dictate the temperature. In this case, you want to dictate the temperature. So you're again, being the thermostat, the energy level. And let me say that side note thing real quick to get it out of my head so I can move on is it takes a little bit of time. When you go ready, fire, aim, and you just launch a shitty podcast and you don't give a crap who listens to it, that's what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to get any listeners and you're just busting it out there, throwing it out without a care, without making sure that all of the things are in place. That's what most people do. 90% of podcasters really just go ready, fire, aim. Somehow, some way, somebody learned ready, fire, aim, and then they started, everybody keeps repeating it and taking it completely out of context. Ready, fire, aim doesn't mean do something badly. It means start taking action on a thing, right? It doesn't mean get things going and recorded and published that are shit. It's not asking you to please have bad quality because that's better than having good quality because you did something. No, 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 no. Ready, fire, aim is just about taking action, massive action. It doesn't mean to publish bad stuff. It means to take the time to understand, to start working on it, to start learning now, to start connecting with the team that's going to help you now. This is ready, fire, aim in its real, raw, old thing as I understand it. It is for you to take the action, but it doesn't mean to make it crap. It's not what it's saying. So anyway, going to the energy level. Oh, man, I am all over the place today. So what am I saying is if you just want to start a podcast that is bad, you can just do whatever you want, right? You don't have to listen to this podcast. You don't have to hire a company to support you. You can just put out the bad stuff automatically and you'll have the podcast and maybe you'll be your only listener. It'll be a diary or a journal, right? It won't be a real podcast because you got to go ready, aim, fire. You got to spend some time getting behind it. And that's all I meant is some people are surprised that it takes one or two or three months to launch a podcast with my team because they had heard of another podcast company where they could launch it in a weekend. You're going to come into this two-day seminar. You're going to come in on Saturday, not at all knowing what you want to do. And on Sunday, your podcast is published. There's not enough time. That is a recipe for crap. That is a recipe for bad stuff. So something that you don't want to do. You want to spend some time and effort to make it good. So I'll say that now. That's why I said this is a brand new client and they're just starting to launch, finally launching. And it's been a couple of months. They've been working with us. They've been recording episodes. We've been editing them. We've been cutting out on ums and uhs. We've been making sure that we know who the avatar is. We did a really good job with the artwork and we started recording episodes and now it's time to launch. And now it's getting ready to be time to launch. As I'm listening to some of the first episodes, this is what happened. The music that he picked was so energetic. It had such a high energy level. And not only that, but the voiceover artist. So his music is original theme music. When you launch with my company, we hire real composers to create original theme music. So we did that. And it takes time to do things right. And we hired a voiceover artist 
to record with that music, to record the introduction, the 20-ish seconds, 15-second intro that the podcast begins with. We chose female voiceover artist between the client and me going back and forth. We decided that even though he's a guy, he should have a female voiceover artist. So here's the thing. The music is exciting. The female voiceover artist is perfect. She has an energy level above average. She's inviting. She's warm. She's friendly. She's even a little flirtatious, like in a way that's not off-putting to anyone, but a way that you just, I really like this person. This person seems like a good person. I want to be around them because they seem friendly. They seem happy. They seem excited about the content and they seem smart. It's just how it feels when you listen to this voiceover artist. And remember, the energy level of the music, way up here. The energy level of the introduction by the female voiceover artist, way up here. The engagement level on those things, it's like you're getting excited. And then my client came in on the first two episodes, which are being replaced. The first couple of episodes, he came in like, you hear all this excitement and he's like, okay, well, hello, it is your host. And today I'm going to talk about this. And basically it was like, as if he was a late night DJ. Have you heard of a late night DJ? Some of you might be so young. You don't really know what FM and AM radio is. You don't recall what these things are. You never experienced it. You always had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and phones that could hold like thousands of songs. And that's not the case for all of us. For some of us, we didn't have those things. We're old enough to remember when we had to fine tune a big giant radio dial until it hit the exact right mark to tune in to a station from far, far away. And we recall that with these radio stations at night, the DJ spoke a little bit differently. They weren't trying to be your friend anymore. They were trying to stay out of the way so that you wouldn't have to get woken up by their introduction or their music or what they're saying to you. So it was very soothing. It was very calming. And you could actually sleep through this. I used to listen to this classical music. Actually, it's funny, random. I'm listening to classical music right now in the other room. And, and it's funny, I haven't listened to classical in a while, but I used to compose music and I love it. I love classical. Anyone who knows me from junior high and high school knows that practically the only thing that I would listen to is Bach, Vivaldi, and Mozart, right? Like those are my three favorites. And Bach, Vivaldi, Mozart, and Pachelbel. I like Canon and D. But anyway, getting back on track, I would listen to classical music on something. I don't remember it was 98. It was 89 point. It doesn't matter. It was late night station that I would sleep to. And I always appreciated that the DJs had their late night voice. I was like, I'm so glad that this guy or the girl wasn't waking me up with their energy, with their higher level of energy. They were chill and they were calm. And they would mention the next song that was coming on and they would do it in a tone like this and they would do it in an energy like this so that it wouldn't really disrupt me while I was trying to sleep. And I loved it, but I don't love it. Two things here. I don't love it when you record your podcast episode with a late night DJ voice, unless you're specifically trying to help people sleep. That's the case. Then do it. I love it now. But for most of the people that would listen to this podcast, they're going to be people with normal, good energy level. They're going to be optimistic and excited about life. And you've got to be careful and cautious of the energy level that you come to town with, come to the podcast with and record with, because it can be bad to go above and beyond. Like It can be bad if you're so over the top, so above average that people wonder if it's even real. People wonder if this is a fake. How can this guy really be this way? How can this girl really be this way? They're hiding something. Why are they so happy? Nobody's that happy. And so you could get some criticism by coming too high of a level. If you're not just getting some criticism, you could also turn off your perfect avatar who needs you by going way too above and beyond, way too excitable. 
that could actually turn people off as well. Or being the monotone late night DJ voice, the Eeyore, if you will, going to maybe turn other people off as well. So you want to fine tune it. And we've talked about this multiple times on the podcast, but not in this way. In the way that I'm delivering it with you now, it's a little bit different. The energy is a little bit different. My thoughts on it are a little bit different. My analogies are a little bit different, but it still goes to show the part that stays the same is A, you got to focus on your energy. You have to understand your energy. B, you need to come in with the same energy level as your intro. That's your music and your voiceover artist. You got to come in with the same. And finally, you want to stay somewhere in the six to eight numbers. So if five is average and one is just completely dead and two is barely alive and three is Eeyore, and four is just slightly below average, five being average, six being about what I'm giving you right now. I am giving you mostly a six or a seven, sometimes maybe an eight right now. And then there's 10, which is like, we'll even say that there's an 11. 11 is above and beyond, like way over the top. 10 is your most excited level and it's probably too much. It's probably too loud. And nine is a little step back, but probably still too much. So it's really that six, seven, eight that's going to get you the best results for the energy level. So let's go back to number two, and that is to imitate, to copy, to mimic, or to mirror the level of energy that your introduction comes in with. How do we do this? Well, for this client, what I mentioned to him, and I was like, bro, you know, I love you, right? He's been a friend for a lot longer than he's been a client. I go, bro, you know, I love you, right? And he's like, yeah, what is it? I know you're going to say something. I'm like, I just want to make sure that you got it with love is that the energy of your music on point. It is an eight. Energy of your voiceover artist, great. She's giving an eight energy. And then you're coming in with a four and it sounds like something changed. It immediately confuses us. Also, we just notice that you don't seem excited because when we get you next to those eights, it comes down. And so I gave him three options. I said, brother, going to give you three options. I sound like I'm from Scotland. Going to give you three options. I don't know if I'm doing a good <laughs> accent for Scottish, but I do have some Scottish blood. Going back to my client, I want to give him three options. I said, I'm going to give you three options. Option number one is that we take down, redo the music and the voiceover artist so that they are coming in with a five and a half or six so that you can come in with a four or five and people aren't going to notice it so much. I said, option number Two, we can leave the voiceover artist. We can leave the music because you chose it. You said you liked it. You said it was perfect for your avatar. So we can leave it, but you've got to at least start out your podcast and hear me out. If you're listening to this episode, this is a part to listen to and to write down and to pay attention to. Said this to him as well. If those are coming out at an eight, you've got to start at an eight. You've got to come in and be like, what's up? It's blah, 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 blah. It's John Stockton. It's Adam Adams. It's Carl Carlson. It's Sarah Saracen. Is that a real name? Sarah Saracen. John Johnson, Carl Carlson, Swen Swenson, and Sarah Saracen. Sarah Saratops. I'll say that. You come in at the same level. So what I told him is you've got to listen to the intro music prior to recording. You got to listen to your voiceover artist prior to recording. And you have to have around that same level. Now, once you establish that level, you can slowly move up and down through the podcast and it will be fine. And I said, option number three, option number three is the hardest option, the most challenging, difficult option, but you might want to do it. And he's like, what is that? What's option number three? And my response is that option number three is we leave the music, the original theme music, and the intro by the voiceover artist, in this case, a woman. We leave those where they are. You still listen to them prior to recording to make sure you're matching and mirroring, copying and imitating, and not going uh, too far above or beyond. But you also, instead of partway through your podcast, letting your tonality and your emotion go way below, you would maintain it. 
and constant. You would maybe even write a six or a seven, six, seven, or eight on your wall behind you recording. And this would allow you to always say, I've got to, throughout the whole episode, I've got to be cordial. I've got to be friendly. I've got to be warm and inviting and flirtatious and helpful and excited and passionate about what I'm talking about. Because those are the things that bring your people to you. It's your energy. It's how you come across. So don't forget it. Maintain that energy level at a six, seven, or eight. Especially if you've got music and a voiceover artist, you want to make sure that you are matching that when at least when you launch. Or going back to option number one, if you can't do any of that, it will be okay for you to record music that's at a four or five and an intro that's at a four or five if you really need to be at a three, four, five, because then it won't be so drastic. It'll be flow a little bit better. But I need to say again, it's still better to come in a little above average, not over the top, but a little above average at a level six, seven, or eight. Got an interview episode coming up. Don't go away. This one was short. I'll see you on the next episode. Oh, hey, because three of my clients came to me recently looking to find a way to have their podcast make the money instead of cost them money. We put together a resource for some of our clients and I want to give it to you as well. It's something that did actually seem to help because one of them is now making $2,600 a month. Another one's $4,500 a month. And the third is making between $5,000 and $10,000 each month. And so it's been a resource that's been incredibly valuable to them. It's our sponsor sheet template. It's a template of a sponsor sheet, and it gives you something that you can hand to potential sponsors and hopefully also be making 2,600, 4,500, or between five and 10K regularly each month with your podcast. So this has been a contributing factor to helping all three of those clients turn their podcast into an additional income stream for them. And the way that you can find it is just going to our website, growyourshow.com, but put in forward slash templates, growyourshow.com forward slash templates. And then you can actually download that template and others that could be valuable to your podcasting experience. I'll see you on the next episode.